Well, this video is one of the series of videos relating to inventory and uh, what we're doing in this one is introducing the economic order quantity. The economic order quantity is a simple inventory ordering model uh, in which uh, you have very little uncertainty, you know how long it takes to get product, you know exactly what your demand is and your demand isn't uncertain. So let's work through, I'll, I'd refer you back to the introduction to the uh, inventory models uh, video that I've also posted but this one is going to show you how to calculate the economic order quantity and calculate uh, some of the other questions that are often associated with the economic order quantity. So here we have, uh, quite simply, we have a company whose demand is equal to 4,000 units per year. Order cost is equal to $20 per order. And holding cost is equal to four dollars per unit. Uh, now holding costs can either be a percentage of acquisition cost or a fixed number. Uh, if it was a percentage of acquisition cost you would simply uh, calculate the number <coughs> based on your acquisition cost but in this case we're just doing a, a fixed amount. So the first question we could get then is what is the cost minimizing level of order and that is essentially the EOQ. Uh, so the EOQ is equal to Q star is equal to the square root of 2 times demand times the setup cost divided by holding cost <coughs> and in this case it's equal to the square root of 2 times 4,000 which is the annual demand times 20 which is the setup cost divided by 4 which is the holding cost and in this case is equal to 200 units. So if you look uh, then the next question that's Q2 what is the total annual inventory cost. And what the EOQ gives you is it gives you the order quantity that exactly balances uh, holding cost with setup cost. Uh, and so let's just show you. So the total cost, just check and see that this is still showing up. Yes, total cost is equal to demand over order quantity times setup cost. So demand over order quantity gives you the number of orders you're going to place times the setup cost for each order. So that gives you setup costs plus Q over 2 times H and this is holding cost. And Q over 2 is your average inventory. So what happens is you get an order and your inventory is up there and it goes down in a linear fashion and you get another order goes up like that and then goes down in a linear fashion. And so uh, because we know demand is consistent and linear uh, our maximum inventory, and we have no uncertainty about delivery, our maximum inventory is equal to Q because that goes down in a linear fashion. Q over 2 is our average inventory which we multiply by holding costs to get annual holding costs. So in this case it would be equal to 4,000 which is demand over 200 times 20 plus 200 divided by 2 times 4. Again, setup costs, holding costs equals 400 
plus 400 equals $800. So we know that these two, by definition with the economic order quantity, are going to be the same. And if you do them and they are not the same, then you've calculated your economic order quantity incorrectly. Now, let's break down uh, sort of uh, some of the things I just talked about. Another question is number of orders per year. <coughs> Excuse me. Orders per year are equal to D over Q. Total demand by quantity ordered in each order which is clearly then number of orders is 4,000 divided by 200 equals 20. So we're going to place 20 orders per year. Um, so let's just talk briefly and just to reiterate, um, just to reiterate, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the concept of uh, EOQ is what happens to annual inventory costs when a non-EOQ quantity is ordered. So let's look first at a hundred. So if we order a hundred, total cost for a hundred is equal to 4,000 divided by 100. So we're ordering less, so we're going to have more orders times S, which was 20, plus 100 divided by 2 times 4. So now our inventory, our order, our average inventory is going to go down. So our total holding costs are going to go down because we're ordering a sub EOQ quantity and our total ordering costs are going to go up. So, which is equal to 800 plus 200 equals 1000. So, we are you can see that because we're not at the EOQ, our order our total inventory costs have gone up. Uh, and because we're below the EOQ, it's our setup costs have gone up faster than our holding costs have gone down. Now let's look at 300, just to sh show you what happens on the other side. Total cost for 300 is equal to 4,000 divided by 300 times 20. So our setup costs are going to go down because we're going to order more, but then order less frequently. Plus 300 divided by 2 times 4, so our average inventory is going to go up, uh, is equal to 266.7 plus 600 is equal to 866.7. So again, we're higher than that $800 uh, dollar, uh, total cost at the EOQ, and so our cost goes up on either side. If we're below the economic order quantity, uh, setup costs higher. And if we're above the economic order quantity, our holding costs are higher. So, just demonstrates a little bit uh, how to uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, how to think about that. If you go back to the EOQ, EOQ is equal to the square root of 2ds over h. And so even if you don't know what all of the factors are, you know that if H goes up, so if holding costs go up, EOQ goes down, right? That number goes down. If setup costs go up, EOQ goes up. So the more it costs you to order, the less often you want to order, uh, the larger your order quantities are going to be. And the same if, if dem demand goes up, EOQ goes up. 
And that's if, even if you don't remember that, if you just look at this formula, uh, you should be able to, you should be able to tell that. So let's move on to a couple of other questions we could ask here. Consider a lead time of four days annual working days of 250 and the question is what is the reorder point? So at what inventory level should we place a new order? So the first thing we need to do is understand what daily demand is. So small d is daily demand is equal to annual demand divided by working days is equal to 4,000 divided by 250 days is equal to 16 units per day. So the reorder point with no uncertainty is equal to daily demand times L which is lead time is equal to 16 times 4 equals 64 units. So in this case you know it's exactly four days ahead of when you'll need it but when you don't know exactly when you need it it's 16 uh, which is your daily times the four days it takes to get here so when your inventory hits 64 units you should order more. This isn't in the textbook so what is the inventory position when you place an order? Inventory position is different from inventory. Inventory position is equal to inventory plus orders pending. So orders that you've placed but that have not arrived yet. So in this case it would be 64 plus 200 which is the quantity you've ordered is equal to 264. If you then said, if I ask you a question, what is the inventory position one day after placing an order? inventory position would be equal to 48 which is 64 minus 16 right you had 64 you placed an order one you use 16 in a day plus 200 equals 248 and if I ask you similarly what is the inventory position one day before placing an order it would be 80 because 
One day before, this would be 64 plus 16, which gives me 80. I won't have an order outstanding because I, an order will have already arrived and I don't place one until the next day. So in that case, the inventory position is 80. That, I think, gives you the sort of main concepts that you need to understand relative to the EOQ. And uh, quick, easy calculations, uh, understanding those different concepts becomes uh, something that you should be able to do relatively quickly. Good luck.